hybrid cars, a hybrid event like Potato Days 21, the word hybrid is everywhere these days. But what it really means for us is hybrid breeding. Hybrid breeding is something that's been around for a long time with other crops. And in this table discussion, uh, we'll talk about the future of the type of breeding together with, still at the table, uh, my co-host Gerard and uh, the following guests, Niels Lauers in the middle, CEO of Plantum, who knows all about the role of the seed sector for global sustainable development and successfully competes for more balanced intellectual property rights of plant material. Mm. And um, there next to Niels, we have Art Vrolijk. He's a project leader of hybrid breeding, HZPC. And since 2010, he's passionately been working on developing hybrid potatoes. Uh, and joining us in a few minutes via Zoom, all the way from India, is Davinder Singh Dosanj, CEO of Mahindra in India, where they now start planting hybrid seeds so that more people in India can enjoy potatoes. Now, before we start uh, the table talk, please don't forget to ask any questions. Um, I can ask them at the end of this table talk. Um, and now it's time to start with Ut. Uh, Art, welcome. Thank you. Can you uh, tell us what the difference is between regular breeding and hybrid breeding? Well, in principle, uh, the regular breeding, the traditional breeding, is basically selecting plants that you like, uh, intercross them, and find something in the progeny which suits you. Now, um, to give it a bit of a, uh, a twist to be able to, uh, to explain it to you, I brought dice, Ooh. which is not a very, very accurate to really uh, Feels like you're explain. going to do some kind of magician yes. act. Yes, <laughs> let's play poker. No, it's, <laughs> it, it's not as, as complicated, uh, but uh, very often um, it's being described as if it's, if it's a completely new and uh, a new revolution in, in plant breeding. But basically for potato, it is something very innovative. Mm -hmm. um, basically, in traditional breeding, if I would represent one variety left and right, the way those dice are placed on the table is really the way they look to me, the way they taste. Uh, and um, basically, if, if I were to cross these two, of course, my ob objective would be to combine the two traits. So if I then throw them together, um, that's the same one single plant. Of course, I can look for the traits that I like, but every year we introduce more traits to look for. So uh, as Robert explained in the movie, we, we are transforming our R&D into a big data company. Um, this is uh, going to complicate our work more and more mm -hmm. because we can only control the, the things that we can see. And many of the traits uh, are uh, governed by genes that we have no clue about. Now, moving to hybrid breeding, we do a little bit more work on our parents and all, the, just imagine that the dice in both parents are all having the same number. So if the perfect con combination would be a six and a five, then one parent will have all sides of the dice six and the other one, all dice will have five on all sides. If you then you can easily predict what will come out. That is the big power of hybrid breeding. So you spend more time on finding the right parents and then you already know what will come out in the end. Mm. So it, it's all about control of the genetics. Control of the genetics. Well, yes. thank you for this detailed... And if I may add one thing more? Yes, yeah, sure. In principle, it's the same genetics. So that, let's be clear about that. So this beauty here, that's actually the potato that's being used in the, in the, in the kitchen and it's growing from this true seed. Right. So. Thank you, thank you, amazing. Uh, let's check if uh, Robert is still there in our neighbor greenhouse, right in between the hybrid potatoes. So here we are in the hybrid potato breeding program, a new system where a set of botanical seeds is actually your variety instead of a clonal multiplication of a tuber. This enables us uh, with all the botanical seeds to ship them easily over the world to 
have quick access to markets. And it also is a system that enables us to adapt the variety quickly with new trades that are desired in the market. Uh, thank you, Robert. Now, um, Niels, I mean, hybrid breeding, is this something that's very special? Didn't this happen a long time ago with many crops? Well, yes, it did. It, it did. It's, it's about 100 years ago that hybrid breeding started in maize. And maize is a cross-fertilizing crop. It's very diverse. And one of the reasons to go for hybrids is to get a more uniform crop. That's clearly not, uh, not the case here in potato. Your potatoes are perfectly uni uniform here. The other thing is that combining these dyes smartly, you get hybrid vigor, it is called. So there are genetic, physiological ways that you can increase the yield potential of crops. And that's been happening with maize a lot. After that, I mean, sugar beet, tomatoes, cabbages, all is hybrid breeding for that kind of reasons. They have in common that there's one reason that's the same for everybody, and that is more focused breeder breeding and much quicker breeding. And much quicker breeding means that you can um, yeah, serve the needs of farmers uh, much more quickly, because those needs, they change, both of the farmers and the industry, etc. And I think for potato, that's a particularly important um, aspect. Um, there are some more, but I'm sure they will come up to the... In, yeah, sure. In Th thank you. Thank you, Niels. So, so, Gerard, for hybrid potatoes, I mean, I hear opportunities, but where? How? Yeah, the opportunities are basically, for, as far as breeding is concerned, to have a more genetic gain. That is an opportunity that can, we can use over time everywhere where we, where we use the potatoes. But the fact that you can also then produce every time uh, the seeds out of uh, those hybrid potatoes and then use the seed to transport them to different countries that makes uh, those hybrid uh, product that with which, we, which you can access markets which we can't access with the tubers that we are selling today. And there are many countries in the world where we can't get our tubers uh, to. And that means that people, farmers in those areas, they have to work with existing um, varieties and, um, and maintain their own seeds. If you can get the seeds, easily and at has there just the, the seeds now the amount of seeds is the same uh, number as a uh, few containers of uh, seed potatoes yeah. if you can transport that to those countries then we can those farmers can grow them over there so that doesn't mean that we are uh, let's say uh, replacing what we're doing with the tubers today but we create access to markets where we don't have access to at this moment and this is especially for central of africa or the central of asia like india for instance and there are many many people living over there and they need the food for the future exactly and and talking about india gerard let's um, move to India right now. Um, India, the second largest potato production country in the world. Um, joining us now is Davinder. Davinder, welcome. Hello from India. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, um, you start sowing hybrid seeds in your country. And, and what is the added value of hybrid seeds for India? Oh, it's a, it's a welcome addition to the seed potatoes in India. I think it has the potential to address two major challenges we face in India. So one of the challenges is majority of the seeds travel on an average more than 1,000 kilometers in ambient temperatures for three to four days, which causes quality issues during transit. Typically, transport cost is 20 to 30% of the total cost in the hands of the customer, which is quite high. Additionally, transport also adds to pollution as we know it. Now, the second challenge is that 98% of the potatoes used in India are not certified. Hence, quality issues compromise productivity. Hybrid seed potatoes, as we see, is, see this, are expected to improve the quality significantly. The process is much faster, so there is less chance of diseases. So, India consumes around 40, uh, 50 million tons of potatoes annually. Uh, it, it has almost doubled in the last 15 years and expected to more than double in the next 20 years. 
So we are very positive about this new technology for the future of potatoes in India because the area is not going to grow so much for, for us to improve the production. Hence, the new technology can chip in there for us to achieve better productivity. Yeah. Thank you, Davinda. Um, well, that sounds great. It is. I mean, they're, to they're totally ready. Yeah, they are already waiting for the product, so... Um, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, now, if you take all these answers in consideration, what, 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 what can you say for hybrid? I mean, what is your hybrid dream for the future? Well, the, 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 fu the, the dream for the future is that we really can create potato varieties and improve the potato varieties relatively quickly so that you can replace them every few uh, years uh, with better varieties, high yields and better resistances, uh, whatever, and in that way, really contribute to uh, food production in the, in the world, and especially, again, in Africa and Asia, there where the people are living. Yeah, so, so as a result, there'll be less hunger. Absolutely. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, let's have a look at a poll for everybody. And the poll question is, the future is hybrid. And you can either choose absolutely, some hesitations here, or only a hybrid car for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as people are filling that in uh, here at the table, um, yeah, um, is the future hybrid, Davinder? Yes, uh, for us, I feel certainly it is, because uh, everybody has talked about so many positivities. And uh, as I already mentioned, for our current productivity level of 22, 23, tons per hectare, if you want to achieve 40 tons per hectare, I think uh, our hybrid uh, true potato seeds can add a lot of value. Yep. Yeah. So the future is hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm glad we've well, just, uh, people are saying this like that. Exactly. I'm sure a lot of questions still around it, but nevertheless. Sure, sure. Well, that's positive. Now, um, if you want to know no more about uh, about this, then uh, Gerard will go into depth about hybrid breeding. Uh, he'll do that in the other breakout about CI CIP's perspective on delivering hybrid potato seed to small farmers in Asia and Africa. Now, shall we have a look at the questions of the audience? Um, to start off with this one, Ot, can I start with you? Um, Dutch grower, it says, but maybe also uh, uh, growers in general, is hybrid breeding a threat to the cultivation of seed potatoes? I think I can, I can add on uh, to, to Gerard's story. It really, our, our primary focus is really to, uh, to reach a market which is not available to us right now, to, uh, to, to pick out uh, uh, sub-Saharan Africa, for, uh, for example. It represents 48 countries. And um, according to uh, research, more than 50% of the global uh, population growth until 2050 will take place in those countries. So, um, yeah. without having to debate about whether to choose our traditional potato varieties or our hybrid potato varieties, I think we, we can easily step over that discussion and really look at those new markets. Gerard? Yeah, there's, a, there's no real uh, threat. And uh, by, uh, if we use, even if we should use uh, hybrid potatoes in Europe, still we need uh, seed potatoes grown out of those uh, seeds. Whether we start with seeds or we start with mini tubers, that is uh, that's the same. So I don't see this absolutely not as a threat for the seed pot uh, potato producers. Okay, thank you. I see a question from Banani. What are the benefits for farmers who will use TPS varieties instead of conventional plants? Niels? That uh, depends very much on the quality of the farmer. Um, <laughs> when you use, uh, basically we are talking about two separate things. It's hybrid breeding on the one side and the use of true seeds by farmers on the other. And um, true seed potato has been, along, has been there for quite some time, some 20, 30, 40 years already in countries like India. And um, many farmers um, find it very difficult to treat those very tiny seedlings, mm -hmm. farmers who are used to put tubers in the ground. So you may have different farmers dealing with that, or you may have to have, um, you may need to have uh, young plant growers uh, providing young plants to, or, or mini tubers to farmers. So there you change a tremendous system, whereas in hybrid breeding, you simply 
well, it's also complex, but uh, you simply uh, uh, become smarter in right. breathing. That's not a totally different, a different thing. It's totally different. So, uh, yes, for, for, for farmers, it will be difficult to, uh, yeah. to change to seeds just like that. Thank you, thank you. Do we have time for another question? Yes, we do. What is my future as seed potato grower when hybrid TPS comes to the market? That's the same question basically as the first one. Well, it's actually threat. it is, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a hot topic then. <laughs> yeah, it's a hot topic. I can understand that. But don't see it as a threat. Really, there are a lot of opportunities, I think, uh, for, for that. And if we can increase the use of the, our varieties in the world, then there, is, uh, there are plenty of opportunities uh, for the seed growers over here as well. Do we have another question? I see so many questions. <laughs> Which one can I, can I pick? Um, let me see. Too, too many. Once the hybrid technology is available, how would you control in which markets it's used? That's, that's of course, an, just an, a decision where, where let's say, if, you, if, it, if it's just a variety, uh, then you can, it is exactly the same discussion as you have today with, with a variety. It doesn't matter whether it is bred in one method or the other. So again, hybrid is just a breeding method. And finally, the the, even the multiplier or even the, the producer of the, of the rare potatoes or the consumer of the rare potatoes don't and won't uh, notice the difference between a hybrid potato and, um, let's say, a classic potato. And the, the potatoes that she is cooking, I mean, they will taste absolutely the same as, uh, as a traditional ones. Exactly. As people think that this it's is different. kind of magic, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. not the case. Considering the time we have to uh, finish this table talk, unfortunately, Davinder, you can't taste, um, taste what Elisa is cooking, but hopefully next time. Thank you so much for joining us in this table talk, and also Art, Niels, and Gerard. Thank you. You're welcome.